House of Takahashi Korekiyo. He was Prime Minister of Japan and the Minister of Finance. So, so let's go inside and have a look. So we're still in the Takahashi House on the second floor. Actually, this place and this room inspired the movie Chihiro and Spirited Away in English. So this is the room where Chihiro and the other women were sleeping, like with the tatami and the shoji door. And you can see, well, in the movie it's not a garden, but it's the big sea, and you've got Chihiro and Lin eating together. And this is the place where the dragon Haku enters, flying the room, like with all the garden flying through. And you can see it really looks like it's, it's a, the room is exactly the same. And well, you just imagine the sea inside of the trees. And you've got the sliding doors and the windows. It's really the same atmosphere, it's so really magical. There it is. Just got the wind. <laughs> You might have recognized that this is the train that inspired the scene in Chihiro, Spirited Away. That's the train Chihiro and No Face take to go and see Zeniba. So, well, this one is on rail, but the one to take is riding on water. And actually, there is a kind of really poetic meaning to the scene. Like, you know, all the people inside are shadows. And it's like in real life. When you take the train, the other people you see, they're just like shadow, you don't know anything about them. And the scenery outside, you don't really know where it leads, or it's just like places that stand alone in the middle of nothing. And you can interpret that, and I think it's really, really a nice thing. And honestly, I think it's one of the most beautiful scenes in the movie when Chihiro is sitting inside the train. So finally we can't go inside, but you can totally recognize it from the outside and it's, it's so really pretty. This time we've arrived at a place that inspired the room inside which Kamaji, the old Kamaji, was working and spirited away. So in the movie Kamaji is making like medicine for the bath. But in fact, this shop here is made for brushes and calligraphy supply, like well, the brush, the ink and papers. But you can see inside, it's really inspired for the movie. So let's, let's have a look inside, thank you. And here are all the drawers that you can see in the movies. Like Kanaji takes like herbs from each of them, like with just long arms. You can see it really looks like it. Supplies are different, but that's what inspires the room in the movie. And that's the room in which Haku, as a dragon, crashed down and was healed by Kanaji and Chihiro. So here are the drawers. You can see the atmosphere is absolutely amazing. It's really the same and so nice to see it real. So all of these. So this part looks a little different from the movie, but it also inspired a scene from Spirited Away. And it's the scene in which Chihiro and Haku are running away to hide Chihiro when she arrives. And you can see like this very big like, barrel. And they're running through a storage and they have a lot of bees. And well, in the movie, they are very small compared to it, so probably the size I'm right now compared to that big one. And the run, you can see like all those barrels and then big fishes and all the storage, and it's inspired by this place, but in much bigger sizes. We're just next to the storage shop that we were in before and this 
is a small building built next to it and actually it's connected by the inside. As you can see, it's not made of wood but a really resistant material like metal and such and it was used if there was a fire for example so they could transfer all the goods like sake, alcohol or the sewing source and they put it all inside in order to protect it from the fire. So that's why this building is a little different and it's really strong so it's made so it can resist all fire and incidents. That's a lot. This one, as you can see here, the trade, it's typically from Japanese restaurant and izakaya. This one is an izakaya. And you can see in the beginning of Spirited Away, it's the place where the parents of Chihiro are going to eat and eat so much that they become pigs. So, actually, to enter the place, you have to lift this one and up and enter. So, this is the place where the parents just eat so much. So, imagine there's just a lot of food and just taking it from everywhere. So it's a kind of counter, a lot of food. Not turning into a big thankfully, but there it is. It's a place. Here is the place that inspired the movie Ghibli, Spirited Away, for Aburaya, which is the bath palace in which Yubaba is reigning. So as you can see, it was used as the entrance, like with the drapes and all the, all the decorations. So the palace in the movie is much, much bigger than this, but the entrance is definitely like this one. And if you can see it from far away, you can absolutely see that it has inspired it. It's based on this one. It's absolutely beautiful building. So just imagining it at night with all the illumination, that's just a beautiful place, really. So this is inside. <laughs> so we have arrived at the bathhouse. First of all, you have to take off all the clothes and put them in a basket right here. So once it's done, we go to the next part and we take one bucket and one of those two in order to completely wash also clean. So actually in Japan, you have to wash yourself before you enter the bath, contrary to Europe for example. So you stand on your stool with your bucket and you wash completely yourself until you're clean and then you can enter the bath. So as you can see, it is very really famous to always have like the Fuji image over the bath. And here's the bath. So it's pretty deep, but there's a little step you can enter. <laughs> Thankfully there's no water, but there we go. The bath in Japan, the water is really hot, especially for European people. Like it's above 40 degrees Celsius usually. It's really, really hot. Like I became so red. And when the European came to Japan during the Meiji era, they were really surprised by the bath because they, were, they weren't taking bath all the times like this. So it's really like it because it's warm, you can relax, you have some time to unwind. And they really loved it, so they started to doing that as well in Europe, like this. So, oh, anyway, let's enjoy it. <laughs> Right now we have entered the women's bath and actually a fun fact, this place and the bath like this, it was actually built starting from the Meiji period. Before that, until Edo, there weren't baths like this. 
people were actually using steam in order to sweat a lot. Like in nowadays we have sauna, it was the same kind of thing. So they were using steam, sweating, and then they were using hot water in order to clean all to sweat away and to get clean. And also at the time, the women in the men bath, they weren't separate, they were together. Actually, it was kind of okay because there wasn't electricity or anything, so it was a little dark. So people couldn't really see each other, so it was alright. But then, when the foreigner came, they were quite shocked to see that women and men were bathing together. So starting from this point, it was separate, the women bath and the men's bath. And we started also to have the hot water, which became the bath as it is right now. So this one is until from Meiji. Before that, it was kind of different. So we were washing that often. They weren't using shampoo or washing their hair that much. So now we have those nice baths. <laughs> So about this building right here, you can see it's different from the rest because it's mostly made of metal instead of wood. And that's because during the Edo period, all the buildings were made of wood and that was really dangerous when there was like fire. An entire city could be destroyed so quickly. So they decided to use metal instead. But metal was quite expensive. So you can see on the bottom floor and the inside, we still use wood a little. Now, there was that very big earthquake in Japan that happened in the Kanto, and all those buildings were destroyed. So they decided not to build them anymore. Now, an inter interesting fact about this building is maybe you've recognized it, but it actually appeared in spirited away. In the ghost city in the beginning, you can see a lot of buildings inspired like this one. And this one, I'm sure, appears in the movie. So you should check it next time. <laughs> okay. So here it is, we've arrived at the end. So yeah, I've learned so much about Japanese history today. And I really enjoyed the Ghibli part. And actually, starting from next year, there's going to be a stage about Spirited Away. So I'm definitely going to watch the movie again. So I hope you enjoyed. Bye!